What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So we have been getting some really good updates from the White House and from reporters as well. So I want to bring you all that stuff in today's video. So first, earlier today, we got another White House press briefing and I want to fill you in on what was said. There were some interesting details out of this press briefing. So again, I want to bring that information to you. We also got some major details on what Mitch McConnell is doing and how he is potentially blocking and holding up all stimulus talks, as well as many other important business from taking place in the Senate. Again, I will address this in this video. Now, I first want to just give you guys an update on what's currently going on in regards to the stimulus negotiations right now. What we are hearing is these are going to take longer than most people expected. Right now, President Biden, according to Jen Psaki herself, she said President Biden is doing some of the, neg the negotiations himself. He is negotiating directly with Democrats. He's, he's negotiating directly with Republicans. And this is making many Democrats extremely upset because this is taking far too much time. He has other more important business to be taken care of that, they, that he should leave the negotiations of this stimulus package, this $1.9 trillion stimulus or COVID relief package, as some people put it, he should leave that to Congress. That's why some Democrats are very upset. Now, most experts and even some lawmakers uh, have been very vocal with this package and they are currently saying that getting an agreement in February is, is currently Congress's, their priority. That's their goal. They want to get this stimulus agreement done sometime in February. So we're about a, about a week away. So they are also saying that the first deadline, however, is not in February. The first deadline is actually March 14th, which means they are anticipating that we go through February, do not get a stimulus package deal done there, and we go into March. Now, they also said the next deadline will be March 26th. This, as we know, is the last day that Congress will be in session for two weeks. They will be on break for two weeks weeks. They will be on recess, which means the chances of stimulus getting done then is highly unlikely. However, we are hearing reports that if there is no, if Congress is uh, off on recess, it doesn't mean every single senator, every single representative will be, that many, especially from the Problem Solvers Caucus, will most likely still be in Washington trying to negotiate this deal. So, the chances of seeing a stimulus check sometime in March are considered less likely than seeing them in April. That is what we know right now. Also, I know you are probably wondering, why doesn't Congress just get their act together you know, and provide the stimulus package for the American people that they've been saying the American people deserve? Why don't they do this? Well, what we are hearing is there's a lot of discussion about uh, you know, this whole thing. And there's a lot of discussion in the White House press briefing today. Earlier today, Jen Psaki said that President Biden is currently negotiating directly with Republicans and Democrats. She didn't elaborate as to who he was negotiating with as far as on the Republican side. On the Democratic side, we could it could pretty much just be anybody, but he's most likely trying to negotiate with the leaders, Nancy Pelosi, Steny Hoyer, and even Chuck Schumer on the Democratic side. On the Republican side, we have people like Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy. Mitch McConnell holds more power than Kevin McCarthy. In the, in the House, we know it's gonna pass, and we are not worried about what's gonna ha happen in the House of Representatives. It's the Senate that everyone's currently worried about. She also said that right now, they are still working on getting this done, and the vaccine is what is seen as the most crucial a piece of legislation in this bill. We need additional vaccine funding. But many reports out right now, even though Jen Psaki did not say who President Biden was negotiating with, some reports are saying that it's most likely going to be Mitch McConnell because Mitch McConnell, as of right now, is holding up a lot of things. And I know a lot of you guys are going to get upset and mad that 
you know, by mentioning Mitch McConnell's name because he has no power in the Senate. He's not the majority leader anymore. And you're right. He is not the majority leader. However, he still holds a lot of power in the Senate. And in some instances, he almost holds more power than Chuck Schumer simply because Chuck Schumer has yet to really grasp his position. And so it's going to take a little while. Right now, Mitch McConnell is holding up the Senate from conducting business because he won't agree on the organizing resolutions with Chuck Schumer. This is something that they need to do to really figure out how they're going to organize business because right now they cannot agree on anything. So we still have GOP committees. President Biden is still waiting on his confirmation of his cabinet. Janet Yellen, she went through the, the hearing, but she hasn't been uh, really approved or sworn in. So we're still waiting on a lot of things from the Senate. And Mitch McConnell, he will not back down from his stance of guaranteeing that the legislative filibuster will not be touched. Right now, Chuck Schumer does not want to agree to that. Even though this would pretty much get, get past us or get us past this point, he is saying no. That right now, that is their leverage. So I want to explain this to you because I think a lot of people are missing um, some of this information by watching mainstream media is they're only telling you one side. They're telling you, oh, Mitch McConnell's blocking stimulus and that we need to get rid of the filibuster. But they're not telling you the other side, which is extremely important because Joe Biden or President Biden is technically on the side of Mitch McConnell, a Republican. Let me explain. President Biden and multiple Democrats currently oppose getting rid of the legislative filibuster and actually side with Mitch McConnell on this one. They don't want to get rid of it because they understand how important this is. They also understand that and one of the reasons why the filibuster was created is not just to uh, give one party more power and more leverage to potentially block uh, a bill from getting passed, but one of the reasons why senators wanted to include a filibuster was actually pretty simple, and it's something that a lot of people completely miss. The reason why they wanted to do this is because if a if a bill gets brought to the floor, and let's say it's a Democratic bill, it's a mostly Democratic priorities, and there's some Democrats that really don't want to vote for it, and there's a lot of Republicans that don't want to vo vote for it as well or support it, here's the thing. If it goes through the filibuster and it doesn't go to a vote and we don't have we don't really see what's what's going to happen here. The, the, the nice thing about it is for a, uh, for a senator is they don't have to go on a record of voting for or against the bill. That's the cool part about this is the filibuster takes away a lot of this pressure that, oh, no, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to you know address my constituents because, you know, I didn't do what I said I was going to do or I voted against a bill that would have helped my state. And so this is one of the issues is this is one of the reasons why many do not want to get rid of it, even multiple Democrats. Even though getting rid of this filibuster would actually provide more power to Democrats and they could just push any bill through that they want with a simple majority of 51 votes, they, some, some Democrats do not want to do this. And they've even gone on record saying that they oppose getting rid of the filibuster. However, Chuck Schumer and Democrats still want to hold the leverage over Mitch McConnell's head saying, hey, if you don't work with us, we are going to pass this. We are going to get rid of the filibuster. So to start off and with this organizing resolution and already have this, this big issue, this big fight on their hands is not looking so great for the Senate and Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer. So just to make this explanation extremely short, I just want to kind of give you a little, little update. Okay, this is what's going to happen. If Mitch McConnell simply backs down and says, okay, let's just get, let's just do whatever you want. I'm going to be on your side. If we get rid of the filibuster later on, fine, I'll deal with it. If this happens, then the Senate can conduct business as usual. But the, the thing that you need to keep in mind is even though Mitch McConnell will be like, okay, whatever you want to do, that's fine. You need to understand that even though he says that and Chuck Schumer wants to hold that carrot over his head saying, hey, if you don't, we have this power. It's probably not going to happen anyway because President Biden doesn't want it to. So just keep that in mind. But another thing you need to keep in mind is that some Democrats are actually siding with Republicans on multiple issues. 
not just the filibuster on multiple issues within this $1.9 trillion stimulus package. And Chuck Schumer is being seen as already losing control of his Senate. Remember, he's the new Senate majority leader, not Mitch McConnell. So right now, what people are currently saying is Mitch McConnell is looking more like the leader than Chuck Schumer. But again, you gotta understand, Mitch McConnell has been the leader for so long. Chuck Schumer is just now becoming the Senate Majority Leader. So he's still trying to fit into his role. So this is going to take some time. We're gonna see how this really works. Again, it's something new, but we have to figure out how we can get through it. So here's what we're hearing right now. The House, as of this morning, is prepared to bring the budget reconciliation to the floor of the House next week and try to get this stimulus passed through. Once this makes it way makes its way through the Senate, and again, this is big. This is what's happening right now is huge for stimulus. But once it makes its way to the Senate, then Democrats only need 51 votes in order to get this to pass. This means that the Biden administration, as of right now, will need to tweak this $1.9 trillion package in order to get the votes. Right now. What we know is multiple Democrats currently oppose this stimulus package in its current form. They are saying that it needs to be more targeted. These are people like Senator Joe Manchin and Senator August King, I believe from Maine. I believe, don't quote me on that, but I believe he's from Maine. Now, both of them currently oppose the bill due to the, the targeting issue. And right now, according to Jen Psaki, she said these checks will have the same income limitations as the last one, as the $600 stimulus check, and the same income limitations as the $1,200 stimulus check. The phase outs will also be the exact same. Here's the issue. It's a $1,400 stimulus check. If the phase out is $5 for every $100 you make over the you know, 75,000 as an individual or $150,000 as a couple filing jointly, people that still make well into six figures will still get a stimulus check depending on how many dependents they have. And again, if this is the exact same as the Cash Act, this means every single person will receive a $1,400 stimulus check. That means a filer, their spouse, their child dependents, and any adult dependents they have on their tax return. This could be big. This could mean people that make $250,000, $300,000 will still get a stimulus check. Maybe not a big one, but they'll still get something. And that's pretty big. And that's what Senator Joe Manchin and Senator Angus King are both saying. Now, right now, something has to happen. There needs to be more, uh, more targeting. But again, this is just one of the arguments. There's others that say they do not fully support a $15 federal minimum wage at this time because it kind of counter counteracts the you know providing additional stimulus to small businesses even though the seven dollar and 25 cent federal minimum wage hasn't been raised in i don't even know how many years okay it's it's been a long time since this federal minimum wage has been raised and there's still many states in the south many people in the south that still only make seven dollars and 25 cents now if if you make seven dollars and 25 cents or you know somebody that does let me know down in the comment section below, what do they do and where are they from? I'm just curious because I live in Washington state where our minimum wage is over $13 per hour. So I haven't really, really had to deal with that. I remember when I was younger, I had a minimum wage job at like $6 and 95 cents. That's what I got paid when I started working. And that was years ago. That was like 17, 18 years ago that I was getting paid that. And so 17, 18 years later, and there's people still in the South that are making $7.25? That's, that's just unreal. You can barely go to McDonald's and buy a meal for $7.25. Just, just trying to put it bluntly, that's not gonna pay for a lot. I don't know what the cost of living is in the South. Obviously, like I said, I live in Washington State, and our cost of living is you know, fairly high over here. However, Again, I don't know your situation, but let me know down in the comment section below. What do you feel about this $15 federal minimum wage? Do you think it'd be better to have it? Do you think it'd be better to wait? What are your thoughts on this? Let me know down in the comment section below. But right now, here's what we're hearing. As of today, 
if Democrats were to get this to to a vote, you know, whatever way they do, right? If it's through a budget reconciliation, they only need 51 votes. Here's here's the thing you need to keep in mind. There's only 50 there's only 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans, okay? The only reason a 51st vote would ever come in is if it's tied 50 to 50. But here's the issue. As of right now, as of this morning, multiple Democrats would not support this stimulus package or this COVID relief package of $1.9 trillion. So, if it took if it went to a vote today, this would most likely look something like 48 to 52. So the two Democrats would actually side with the Republicans and say no. If this happens, there would not be a need for Kamala Harris to come in and as a tiebreaker because there would be no tie. It would be 48 to 52. If that was the case, even with a budget reconciliation process, this would still not pass. That is the big issue. And so this is what we're hearing right now is right now they are wanting to provide the next two weeks to Congress to get a deal done, do some type of negotiation, figure out how we can pass this bill and let's get it done. Again, that's just two weeks. I said this the other day, two weeks is when we should see a stimulus package in just two weeks. Now, whether this happens, whether we see bipartisan support, whether this goes to a budget reconciliation, we don't know. But what we know is they are providing about two weeks to get this done. So we will see what happens. But that is what we're hearing right now. That is what we know. As always, as I know more, I promise I'll share more. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.